Assalamu alaikum, good afternoon, and welcome to a, another virtual boardroom uh, with Defense Services Marketing Council. Uh, we're very honored to see everyone uh, in this new normal um, on a regular basis, and our goals of keeping people together uh, and networked. Uh, we sincerely appreciate uh, all of our members and our partners and certainly our presenters uh, for taking that extra bit of time. Uh, we have a number of people joining today, so we have a, about 51 participants registered, so we're just going to give that one more minute. And Again, if you can just turn on your camera for the first kickoff uh, and introductions, and then once the presentation uh, begins, please feel free to sit back, relax, and enjoy the presentation. I see, some of, uh, I see some of our colleagues and friends out there, uh, so, some who tried to join early, and uh, I will call out Jerry for that at SAW, who scared me about an hour ago and said, where are you? I thought we were supposed to be online. But uh, it's great to see everyone out there, and really we're, we're very honored to uh, have the opportunity to be together like this uh, and, and on a more regular basis, so thank you. Um, a special thanks to EDGE uh, for making this series of virtual boardrooms uh, possible with their subsidiary companies. A special thanks to Altaric uh, and to the CEO, Tunis Bota, who we will hear a little bit more about before I turn over the presentation to him. As we do with every working group, I'd like to remind everyone uh, we will be taking questions at the end. And if you can please, during this working group, send me your questions directly, and we will be compiling them uh, for the end of this presentation, uh, the last 15 to 20 minutes. So please send those directly via Zoom or via WhatsApp or via email uh, to me, and we will compile those uh, accordingly. Let's see. I am just going to uh, get one group shot for everyone. And I always, I always welcome those that are also taking group shots uh, that we can use later. Uh, so if you have uh, any of your uh, group shots that you like to send, uh, we certainly appreciate seeing those at the end of this, uh, at the end of this virtual boardroom. Without uh, further ado, I'd like to introduce the CEO of Altaric, an edge company. Uh, Tunis Bota is CEO of Altaric, an edge entity and regional leader in aerial weaponry and manufacturer of precision guided systems. In this role, he is responsible for liaising with the company's board of directors to steer its strategic direction, and he's tasked with compiling quarterly and annual budgets. Tunis is also involved in coordinating and with business partners regarding contractual and operational business aspects. In addition, he fulfills the role as Director of Operations of the Altaric, playing an instrumental role in the optimization of company operations and negotiations with suppliers to ensure best practices, schedules, and technical solutions. He brings a wealth of experience spanning more than 35 years to this role. Prior to Altaric, he completed a tenure as General Manager of Tuazin Dynamics, later rebranded to Barij Dynamics, where he supervised the product and business development functions. In a previous role, he served as business unit manager of Standoff Weapons Group in Denel Dynamics, previously known as Kentron, in South Africa, where he was responsible for setting business-related strategic planning and objectives for all air-launched standoff weapons in the Denel Group. And before I turn it over to Tunis, I'd like, I'd like to say one thing. In 2012, I was walking across an airfield in Pretoria, South Africa, and out of the middle of uh, a lot of chaotic exhibitions and conferences going on, I hear a voice yell, Matthew. And Hamid al Marar walks out, and suddenly I see Saif al Hajri and a big UAE delegation I hadn't seen yet. And Hamid says, Come with me, come with me. And I follow him, and I say, Hamid, where have you been? I haven't seen you for almost a year. He says, I've been working on a special project you're about to see. And he walks me over to the Altaric model, which has been set up at this very large South African air show. And I w was able to see 
the Altaric be born in 2012. And so today is very special because as I, I was saying during rehearsal yesterday, it's like watching a young man grow up and uh, be so proud of, of watching Made in the UAE products uh, come to fruition. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to the CEO of Altaric, Tunis Bota, please. Thank you, Matthew. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, um, my colleague is also in, in the audience, uh, Yusuf Albulushi. So he's a marketing manager. Please allow me just to, uh, to share the screen with you. Okay, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, let me start. Uh, this is a basic introduction of the Autaric company. Um, the agenda that I've put forward is, um, first of all, uh, we'll give a short introduction on the company profile. We'll talk a little bit about the, the connection to Edge and the Edge group domains, uh, the company's capabilities, um, and then right towards the end, there's a couple of slides that we've added about the Altaric product, the standoff weapon product that, um, that is the backbone of this company's business. Let me just share the screen like that. Okay, there we go. So Altaric, who are we? So we, we are the first UAE-based manufacturer of uh, smart precision guided weapons for the conventional Mark 80 series aerial bombs. These are the Mark 81, 82, 83, 84. So if, if I can take you back to 2012, Thousand Dynamics was created as a joint venture between uh, the Nell state-owned company and Thousand. Uh, and the company retained its name until approximately 2018, 2017, 2018, and it was changed uh, to Barish Dynamics. And with the establishment of the Edge group of companies, uh, it, the name was again changed, the branding was changed to Altaric. So Altaric, the company name, producing the weapon system called Altaric. So we rapidly established ourselves as a, as a regional leader in the PGM business, matching the quality standards of global manufacturers. The numbers are, as, as Matthew referred to, you know, company is, is, is eight years uh, since establishment. Um, I think a lot has happened and I'll try and take you through uh, where we are currently. We, uh, we currently have 200, just over 200 employees, primarily consisting of uh, technical personnel, probably about 85% of our personnel are, are technical. And out of that 85%, a good measure of people are senior, experienced missile development engineers that we have managed to uh, to get from primarily uh, South Africa, but also other parts of the world, in order to uh, to help us with the establishment of the technology in the UAE. So we are part of the, the Edge group of companies. Uh, you all probably know very well that Edge was established in 2019. Um, and where do we fit into Edge? I'll, I'll come to that a little bit later. The Edge company consists currently of 25 defense-related companies divided into five clusters, um, consisting of 12,000 employees and I think 5 billion uh, turnover is, is quite big. So it's, it's, I think in any man's sense, it's a, it's a, it's a big company. Edge is, is really a big company which brings, um, the aim is to deliver advanced technology solutions to the region. So uh, where do we fit in? Where does Altaric fit in? On the right hand side, you can see the five clusters. We are in the missiles and weapons cluster. Um, and the, there are a number of other clusters around us. Uh, there's approximately seven companies in the missiles and weapons cluster. Uh, the Edge Group also uh, are doing some technology work in, in research areas that, uh, that you see in the, on the left-hand side, the artificial intelligence, uh, quantum computing, cryptography, material sciences, secure comms, smart solutions, and autonomous capabilities. These are all uh, future technology domains that are being uh, researched uh, at the moment as part of the, the Edge uh, Group. Autaric is, a, as I mentioned, is a joint venture between the NEL, 
However, in Danel, our technology partner is, is Danel Dynamics. That's the missile company situated in Pretoria, the old Kenton. Um, and now, Danel Dynamics has been established in, in the late 70s. So it's a company with a number of years of, of relevant high technology uh, experience and uh, has a lot of expertise. Their core business is tactical missiles, or precision guided weapons, unmanned aerial vehicles, and also space solution. The company is approximately just over a thousand people, and uh, it's a very well established organization. So, Tariq, our vision is to become a self sustaining provider of defense solutions through our constant innovation and the use of latest technologies. And this is exactly what we are really aiming for, what we are, this is our driving force, and this is where we are steering the company towards. And uh, I think over the past eight years, um, we have proved to, to have quite a fair degree of success uh, during this period. The mission is to design, develop, create, assemble, manufacture products through collaboration with local suppliers and deployment of latest technology. So important here is um, one thing is, is to, to, to establish the technology, the missile technology or the PGM technology in the UAE. But not only that, is, is also to have a positive spin-off into the industry by broadening our supply chain to buy from the UAE. So get to the stage where we say, not only designed and developed, but but made and produced in the in the UAE. So there's a big drive to develop local suppliers uh, to become part of the supply chain, and uh, and we've had a fair degree of of success over the past few years around that. Our core business is obviously the product that some of you may know very well, the Altaric. It's a very modular family. It's not just one system. It's a family of smart weapons on the Mark 82 and 80, 81 and 82 aerial bombs currently. Uh, the, the future uh, bombs that will be incorporated are the bigger versions of the Mark 80 series, the Mark 83 and the 84. And basically what this system does is it converts uh, unguided aerial weapons or the old iron dumb bombs as we know them into high precision long ranged uh, focused munitions so what has happened over the past few years is the, the joint venture was established as primarily a manufacturing and assembly and test facility for Altaric uh, and this would have created a footprint in the UAE uh, and a, a base to say what happens next. So in the years that followed, we expanded our engineering disciplines and we're currently doing design and development and also the, the platform integration. So we have established quite a few first offs in the, in the UAE. We, for instance, um, are upgrading this system. We are on a continuous uh, modernization program of the system with latest technologies. We have established uh, a flight testing capability that's that's never been done before. So we we're able to design, develop, produce systems, and go and field and flight test them uh, with our local user, which has um, proved to be very successful over the past two three years. Part of the process is, is extensive testing uh, and we have a, a number of engineering labs that provide uh, the ESS, environmental stress screening, which gives you the thermal and cycling and the vibration, so uh, can cover that across all the operating and storage environments that this system is, is designed for and exposed to. The company is, um, quality is, is, is very important. Uh, we proud ourselves that we have a very good track record in terms of the use and the reliability of the products that come out of this facility. We have uh, engineering labs that are, that are quite modern and advanced uh, and allows us to conform to the, um, the military standards required to produce a weapon system like this. 
We also do uh, quite an extensive amount of quality inspections on parts procured from around the globe. Uh, and that allows us to present or produce a, a weapon system that is, that is well mission proven. A little bit about the system. Uh, Altaric is a, is a very flexible family, choice of dual mode seekers uh, to achieve a high degree of accuracy. Now, the dual mode seekers consist of a, a GNSS INS solution uh, integrated with a a terminal seeker, either a semi-active laser and imaging infrared, and I'll get to that a little bit later. But it allows the system to strike uh, high priority fixed, even off X axis, moving and relocatable targets. So it's a, it's a very flexible system. So in a in a proper mission, um, that that current modern day battlefield, you'll have uh, great flexibility with a system like this. What makes us different? So we believe that Altaric is, a, is very well a mission proven precision guided weapon. Uh, and let me not say more about that. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a family of smart weapons. It's not just a single solution. It's not just one weapon. Uh, because of the modularity, it is, it is really a big family that keeps on expanding. We are proud to say that we write our free, so it, uh, it alleviates a lot of headaches for uh, potential users and the company is also ISO 9001 and AS9100 certified and obviously we comply to all the health and safety standards uh, of the UAE so um, I think we, we pride ourselves in the fact that um, the aerospace 9100 uh, latest accreditation and the standards that the company that is a quite a stringent uh, certification to, to have under your belt. This is the management team. So we, we are building aerial capability. We are providing advanced uh, guidance solutions uh, by using the latest technology. And we're doing all of that in the UAE, in Abu Dhabi. Uh, with a team of people, if you see the composition, that gives you some idea of the composition of our team. With a team of highly experienced, uh, talented, engineers that we managed to attract over, over the period of a few years. So if I can dive down a little bit into the, the product itself, um, the product is a modular kit for the 8182 series bombs. The dual mode seekers uh, consist of the GNSS INS hybrid mid-course navigation. That means it's not only GPS, but it can uh, make use of some of the other constellations as well, a number of the other constellations as well. And for terminal guidance, which provides us with uh, a high degree of accuracy, we augment that with either a, a laser seeker, semi-active laser seeker, or an imaging infrared seeker with automatic target recognition. And all three of these seekers have a uh, height of burst sensor integrated in the nose. So, so what it means basically that you uh, can use uh, an electronic fuse um, and do a, have an air burst capability, a programmable air burst capability. So with a fragmentation warhead that gives the warfighter another flexible solution for any mission. So it's a, it's a high precision long range kit. Um, that, that still is today um, the, the PGM with the longest demonstrated range out there. Some of the technical parameters, I think, um, I, that you may I be familiar with, your, your maximum audio. launch speed. Maybe you're back now. Go ahead. Okay, my back. Okay, maximum launch speed, Mach 0.9. It could be carried at, at close to supersonic. Speeds, uh, launch altitude, uh, anywhere up to 40,000 feet. The Altaric S is the same weapon with, uh, with a, without the wings, 40 kilometers, or the, the one long range with the wing kits, 120 kilometers. Now, in this business, uh, it's primarily all about range, accuracy, and collateral damage. So, uh, high accuracy um, reduces your unwanted collateral damage. We have demonstrated uh, accuracy better than what we specify here. 
the GNSS is primarily due to uh, commercial uh, acquisition um, constellation errors that you that you will find in, in any commercial application. The impact speed uh, bigger than uh, or higher than 200 meters per second, so that's also variable, similar to the pro uh, impact angle. Some idea of, of the all up system mass of the Autoric S, it's an 81 and an 82 configuration, so um, uh, it's uh, the highest mass you can see is a 300, just under 400 kilograms. I think a very good service life of 20 years and fatigue life of 100 hours. So, so that's, that a weapon like system like that should not be carried for 100 hours. If you have carried a weapon like this for 100 hours, um, that's, that's quite a, outstanding, I think. On the right, you could see uh, some of the videos, um, some of the images that, that, that I've shared uh, showing the accuracy. Uh, we've really uh, been having a good success on on the flight test that we've we've continuously having, uh, and not only in during the development phase, but also locally, and uh, also outside the UAE, where we've had very good successes on weapons being uh, demonstrated to potential customers. It's very simple. The Altaric is based the the, the Classification is based on, on range, on standoff range. On the left-hand side, it's, a, it's the S, whether it's the Mark 81 standard range or the Mark 82 standard range, the same kit. So you take either one of those bombs and there's an adapter on the front, adapter on the rear, and the electronics uh, in the nose, the seeker in the nose, and the power electronics in the back fits onto those adapters. And then you can add the same wing on there for either the Mark 81 or the Mark 82 configuration. So, so that leaves a potential client with a, a, quite a variety of, uh, of flexibility of this system. Since as I mentioned earlier, it's not just one weapon, it's a, it's a family of weapons. So you could mix and match, you could, you could uh, interchange any of the seekers, the weapon will electrically identify which seeker is on board and will uh, program that uh, mission profile. Similarly, the wing, the wing is identified automatically. So the moment you install the wing on the weapon and you power up the, the weapon, it will automatically identify that this is, for instance, a Mark 82 with an imaging infrared seeker and a wing installed, so I will adopt a certain guidance uh, control algorithm. The three seekers are uh, the, the GNSS INS seeker on the left with the height of burst sensor integrated. The semi-active laser, which is used for uh, for moving targets, relocatable targets. So uh, it's uh, it's been proven against moving targets quite extensively, and also with the height of burst. And then the the one that is, I think, the the high accuracy, the imaging infrared uh, with the ATR algorithm, also with a height of burst sensor integrated in the nose. Just a, a basic description of, of the mission, of a typical mission. Uh, the air crew would do mission planning on the ground with dedicated mission planning software. That allows them to um, import all kinds of uh, data into the, the software being provided to them to, to determine the launch altitude, launch range, attack direction, and this variable uh, programmable parameters that the warfighter can adjust to suit the specific mission. Once that's done, it's the files are downloaded loaded on what we have, what we call a weapon wireless controller. Uh, and you could download up to a hundred files on that, on that tablet, on that controller. And uh, it's, so it's available for the pilot uh, to reprogram any of the weapons uh, on the aircraft prior to launch. Um, the weapon system is, is loaded on the aircraft, the ground test is, is done, um, the necessary uh, connection to the weapon with the weapon wireless controllers is done, so you could have multiple weapons on all the cleared configured stores for, of the aircraft, 
and the pilot would be able to see which weapon is active and uh, on which station it is. Communication takes place between the weapon wireless controller and the weapon itself. Take off uh, after that and then en route uh, once the satellite, uh, the constellation is acquired, uh, you'll get to display something similar to what is shown in the, in the bottom here as a it's typical, typical display on the pilot's wireless controller. The system does continuous uh, built-in tests, so you have a, a system health report uh, continuously throughout the mission, and then it's very simple. The, fl the pilot flies the aircraft to be at a specific point in space as indicated on a launch acceptable region. The, the red, uh, the green dot, sorry, the green dot that you see there, so it aims the aircraft at that point, flies into the green dot and release the weapon. And that is as simple as that. And after that, everything happens uh, automatically. So the weapon will be, will come off the launcher, will open the wings and will start the navigation route to the target, depending on the uh, parameters, the mission parameters, uh, pre-programmed onto the weapon, it will follow that and attack the target in accordance with the with those parameters. So what is unique unique about this is there's a few smart features that's that's very useful for a system like this. So an Altaric S can can do off-axis uh, target attack up to 90 degrees. So you can you don't have to point the, the aircraft's nose at the target. And similarly the long range weapon can fly in an opposite direction. All of that uh, can be done at any point in time during the mission and the only thing the, the, the pilot has to do is to just launch the weapon inside the launch acceptable region. The weapon will automatically report the health status, give you a, a thumbs up, a green for go, and the, the weapon is released like a normal Mark 80 series bomb. Some of the uh, programmable attack parameters, very important, are impact angles, um, 30 to 90 degrees, so for range 30 degrees for uh, high impact or high terminal velocity is 90 degrees. You can also adjust terminal velocity. You can also use any of those angles and adjust the terminal velocity. And it will automatically compute the range and the, the launch point for the pilot and display it on, on the tablet, on the weapon wireless controller. Uh, any, any errors in, in potential errors in target altitude, which, which is normally very common, especially in, uh, in the GPS or GNSS constellations, um, a 90 degree impact angle uh, compensates for that. So you're coming right from the top, so you disregard the, the, the errors that you may have. And the, a nice feature about the system is if, if you have programmed a weapon for a specific mission and due to the, um, due to the prevailing conditions, uh, it, it sees that it cannot reach the target due to, for instance, a high uh, wind speed on the nose, uh, which reduces the, the standoff range the weapon will automatically ad start adjusting the parameters to be able to get to the target. So whether it's an off-axis uh, attack or a 90 degree attack, the weapon will uh, fly via a waypoint and close the, the corner, so to speak, to get to the target. Uh, instead of going around the corner, you can the weapon will uh, fly straight towards the target and start reducing the impact angle from a 90 degree down to a 30 degree and reduce terminal velocity. And there's a couple of other features that we also have to ensure that, um, that the weapon does eventually um, reach the target area. And the reason for that is just simple. Um, it's very difficult sometimes in, in a combat environment to determine the prevailing wind conditions, which has quite a big impact on the, uh, on the flight of a system like this. You could make, we've seen quite large errors being made, and that means that a weapon does not reach uh, the intended point of impact. And if, if you have troops quite close to a specific uh, target area, your troops are in danger of, of being uh, by accident 
being attacked by our own system or being hurt by our own system. So all of this is done to ensure that, um, that the weapon system does fly to the intended uh, target point. Opportunity mode is um, a lock-on before launch and a lock-on after launch. So this has also been extensively tested and it's proven to be very successful. So the, we pride ourselves that this weapon is, 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 has this intelligent decision-making ability to, uh, to change the pre-programmed uh, constraints during flight path to uh, ensure that the target is reached even under very adverse conditions, uh, as I say, unplanned or for conditions. I have a, a small video that I would like to show you just so, so in our world, it's very simple. As I said, you know, range and accuracy. Uh, accuracy allows you to have uh, very little or low collateral damage, but that's what everybody is pushing, you know. How accurate is the system really and, and how far does it, does it fly? So I have just one impact shot. Unfortunately, we have a whole library, but I am I'm not at liberty to share some of the data as you may appreciate is quite sensitive, but this gives you some, some idea of what the system is capable of. So this is one of the shots. You've seen some of the pictures that I posted earlier in the slideshow um, showing you. This was typically a weapon coming in at 30 degrees. Um, this particular flight we had, uh, we had altitude, winds at altitude of 100 knots. Um, and this, is, um, this was done as part of the qualification flight trials to see what will happen. So this weapon uh, adjusted its terminal dive angles from a very high impact angle coming down to 30 degrees uh, and still get to the target and really on being on target. Some contact details, uh, my, my name on the left, uh, Janice Wurta and uh, Mr. Yusuf Albulushi is our business development manager. So Matthew, that's it. It's been a, a, a wonderful presentation and uh, we have a number of questions that have come in. Um, I, I'm gonna go with one of the most technical first. Um, the, the, throughout the presentation, uh, you talked about how Altaric has grown uh, from manufacturing, assembly, now development and design. Um, one of the, the questions that have come in is, uh, will companies at TIP or outside of TIP um, be able to uh, utilize any excess capability or capacity at Altaric for things such as PCBA production, EMI, EMC, and cable assembly. Yeah, we, we have, um, there is capacity, um, obviously, in the company. Um, the, the PC board assembly facility currently belongs to one of our sister companies, Halken. Uh, so that has been transferred to them. So, you know, there's capacity in that facility. But they certainly, in Altaric, uh, since we have, big facilities with a very strong workforce there there are opportunities to explore any of the the capabilities that we have uh, available today so our, our capacity does allow and we are interested and we would like to work with companies not only inside tip but in the bigger uh, part of the uae you know so we we would welcome that that's a uh, the commercialization. I think is is important to many of the DSMC members and partners that are that are viewing uh, this presentation today. And so I think that comes as a as a welcome uh, opportunity. And and we would encourage that at the end. Of course, we will be happy to make uh, direct contacts. And and you have the contact information there on the screen. As a follow up question to that, from another member, uh, they are asking about how do Altaric and Halcon work together from a manufacturing standpoint? Is there a streamlining between the companies? Is there a shared uh, manufacturing uh, under the edge umbrella? How does that work? Well, the two companies are part of the missiles and weapons cluster. So we report to the same, in the same group. Um, Altaric is more established than, than Halkin. So we, we do work uh, together in, in a number of areas. Uh, we are involved in, uh, in joint development between the two companies. Uh, 
since we are a, a more established entity, um, a lot of some of the work that 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 Hulken is is ramping up to to do in future production is being handled by us at the moment. Uh, so they they are looking at at, at make and, and vice versa. So uh, so I think in future what will happen the the, the, the collaboration between the two companies will grow uh, with the uh, establishment of of, of Alken. Um, and, and today, you know, we have our core business and Alken has a whole variety of product portfolio on their side. And we, we, we do talk to each other and we do work together to see that, you know, we eliminate the duplication and, uh, and, and the inefficiencies in the group. Uh, the, the, uh, the question regarding, and this goes back to, during your presentation, you talked about parts from all around the globe. Can you talk about how do you work with a sustainable supply chain? Certainly the disruption of COVID-19 and the ability to simply get logistics in the air or by sea or by land around the world has been interrupted. How have you worked to mitigate those interruptions and uh, make sure that the supply chain is sustainable for your product? Yeah, we have, we have uh, in, in, especially in, in, in most of our critical uh, components, we, we try to have alternative source uh, in the supply chain. It's not always that easy, but we try and do that. So, but, but COVID was now a good example. Uh, I think, yeah, it has been very disruptive. Uh, we we were not affected that much because um, for you know first of all I think we we managed to uh, to be well ahead of, of our project timeline so we had stock in store so we we, we were not uh, really uh, that affected but um, having suppliers in in various parts of the world allowed us to source from either or uh, in most of the critical parts that we foresaw. Um, but it's it's obviously um, as I mentioned in the in the presentation, we have over the period of two years, uh, the last two and a half years, uh, grown uh, a lot of uh, local companies uh, in the manufacturing of of some of the parts. So there's a continuous drive on on in the company to grow the the local footprint and make sure on a year on year basis that um, we we grow the industry so that we can sort of isolate ourselves to an extent uh, with events like these. Our next question uh, is about uh, your uh, business development and your geographic um, footprint. Um, you mentioned that uh, the product is ITAR free. And uh, that's certainly a, a bonus uh, when you're able to sell to allied uh, countries and customers. Can you talk a little bit about uh, your business development goals and uh, where you are taking Altaric uh, for made in the UAE export? Yeah, so, um, yeah. so Altaric, uh, the company has, 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 been, um, has been in the, in the business development, uh, international business development domain for the past Two to three years so i think we've made very good progress with a number of friendly air forces to the uae in some of them we are in at quite advanced stages of discussions we have done uh, successful demonstrations in uh, in a few places outside the uae so there's a very big drive uh, both from edge and from the company to to grow our business uh, not just inside the UAE, but also outside the UAE. We have a very good product. We believe in this product. It's uh, it's really a, uh, a marketable product. It's v it's very reliable. It's a, it's a high technology solution, uh, and there is a demand for a weapon system like this. So the, the intention is to grow the market even further. Uh, we have obviously started in the region. Our business development campaigns have started in the region around us. But we are expanding this footprint. Now, COVID unfortunately uh, put a bit of a, uh, a halt on, on, I think, uh, all of our uh, intentions in, in the business development domain. But um, the, the aim is obviously to, to increase this footprint uh, to areas further than just the, the Middle East and North Africa region. Yeah. The uh, a number of questions are coming in as uh, you were giving your business development 
uh, response. And I'd like to uh, just let everyone know if we do run out of time, we will get these additional questions over to Altaric uh, and we'll get, try to get you those answers. Um, but in the meantime, please keep your questions coming. Uh, they're really good questions. Um, the next question uh, is regarding the seekers. Uh, there have been a number of people asking about the variety of seekers um, and are they being designed and developed in the UAE and, and where might they be manufactured uh, if outside the, the UAE and how can, um, how can other organizations contact you regarding a collaboration uh, around those seekers? Okay, so the, the, the original development of the Seekers uh, were done by the NEL Dynamics as the technology partner. And with the establishment of the joint venture, this uh, technology was brought over to the UAE. These Seekers are today manufactured, assembled and tested in, in the UAE. Obviously, we procure our components from around the globe. We test, assemble, integrate uh, the Seekers in-house. Um, but we, today we are upgrading these seekers. We are currently busy with a number of upgrades on all of the seekers, uh, looking at the future. Uh, they, they work quite well, but uh, we address obsolescence and make sure that, this, that this, the, the product remains uh, competitively priced and in production to ensure that it's, it can be supported. So the seekers, um, if any, anybody is interested in talking to us about seeker and seeker technology, they are welcome to, to contact us. Uh, we'd be willing to, to have discussions in that regard. As, as a follow-up to that uh, seeker question, um, you also highlighted during your presentation that Edge as a company um, and your sister subsidiaries under Edge, which is now Edge as a company is really one of, of the world's largest defense companies and is certainly growing. Um, you're able to reach out to other sister companies within the Edge group uh, to benefit Altaric. Um, can you talk a little bit about our artificial intelligence and, and how might the future look uh, for Altaric systems using AI? Yeah, we, we are we are uh, in process of of, uh, of looking at, at AR for AI for the future in in a new uh, concept of the seeker that that is in development. I, I don't want to do, disclose um, too much about that at this point in time, but it's it's definitely that there's a big focus in edge on AI, AI and the future of AI and the application of of the technology in weapon systems like this. So we are uh, engaged in an active program to, to look at the, the future of, of, of uh, what I believe is, is quite a, a significant development of a new seeker for a system like this. Um, there are not many options, I believe, like this out there in the world. Uh, but the focus is there. Some, some R&D is being done in-house. We obviously have some partners uh, on board as well uh, to, to assist us and support us. Uh, and that is a, something that, that will hopefully be rolled out in, in years to come. Okay, let's, let's spend a little bit of time um, regarding uh, partners and, and really the lessons learned um, of this successful partnership uh, between Danel uh, and Altaric. Um, can you talk about what are the lessons learned that you might be able to share over the last eight years as a, a large OEM from South Africa working with the UAE to build something uh, unique and exportable from the UAE, what are some of the, the, the benefits of working with the UAE, of, of forming a joint venture, of building a company together? As many companies, whether large, medium, or small, are looking to emulate that success, what are some of the lessons learned that you would be able to share with us from a Danel perspective uh, that might be useful to some of the attendees today. Uh, for, from a, well, I think from from a, from a, an overall perspective, it's it's just you know you have to have a a solid amount of trust between the partners, and I think this is this has been the case between Danel and uh, and the UAE. Um, the what obviously um, helped this business grow was that we had a solid launch customer. We had the UAE Air Force um, supporting the, the venture right from the beginning. Um, it's, it's extremely challenging trying to establish a venture like this 
uh, hoping to get a launch customer because there's a, there's a huge amount of funding required. I think what, what made the, the venture very successful is that Danelle had a very good amount of relevant expertise in the field uh, that they were willing to share. And uh, there was a lot of interaction between Danelle and, and the UAE right from the word go. So I think based on trust and looking at the future and, and having very good support from, from the local user, uh, enabled us to start this company really on sound financial footing. Um, and then from there on, what, what we did is we extracted a lot of the, uh, the capability and the technology that the NEL was prepared to share and transfer into the UAE in order to bolster the, the joint venture, having made it a, it a joint venture to the benefit of both shareholders. So I think Danelle was, was really very open. I think on the UAE side, um, there was very good cooperation with, um, with Tawazun at, at initially, uh, followed by the, the ED group, um, to, to really accept this, uh, this partnership and, and grow it. And, uh, and I, you know, I cannot stress enough, without this Air Force being absolutely instrumental in supporting this venture to say that it's we, they, they realize it's strategic. They realize it's, it's important to have a, a sound business model um, and, and make the company uh, you know, viable, sustainable business uh, is important for, for the future. And, and this allowed us to, obviously, we, 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 were, uh, we were in the fortunate position that we could attract a lot of the, uh, the Danel expertise into the UAE. And that helped quite a bit. I think the, the mere fact that we were able to appoint talented, experienced individuals, fast track the business. When you, if you look at what has been achieved in a period of eight years, I think it is it's quite remarkable. Uh, if you look at the facilities today uh, and the capabilities that have been established, it's a, it's a product that is well supported, produced, built, made in the UAE uh, for the region. You, you talked uh, about recruiting, and one of the questions uh, that came up is you held up a slide that showed the growing team, and, and there's a, a great mixture of, of uh, local Emiratiization of the leadership team. Um, of course, uh, we, we're, we're honored to have Youssef Al-Baluchi uh, with us today, also with your business development team. Can you talk about a little bit about how it, did the training or the internship or the train the trainer happen between South Africa and the UAE? Did you send people to be trained at Danel? Uh, did Danel send people to the UAE? Um, and certainly the goal of all of our companies in the UAE is to have the highest level of MRIization possible. How did you achieve that? And, and what did the, the, uh, training and academic side of that look like over the last eight years? Yeah, yeah we, we have not yet achieved uh, our goal in terms of emeritization, so we, we're, st we're still striving to get there, but we are continuously, uh, uh, you know, pursuing, the, the, you know, and chasing the, the goal to get, uh, you know, more uh, local Emiratis on board. I think Yusuf is a very good example. He was one of the first group of uh, technical personnel that were positioned in the NEL for a long period of time to be trained both in theory and in, uh, in, in, in practice uh, on the job training for, for a long period of time. It started from there, there's, there's a team that, that, that was stationed in South Africa and then following that uh, a huge amount of, of, uh, of people over the period of years traveled back and forth between an experienced individuals, tra traveled back and forth between uh, the NEL and the UAE um, with a clear set goals on what, what, have, what has to be achieved. So we had a company plan, we had a strategy, we had goals set, and we had a, an experienced team that's, that's been around and that knew what, what to do. And they supported a team that, were, that was established, was starting to be established on this side. Uh, and we eventually came to a point where the company became uh, so, sort of independent, more independent or independent enough to be able to start production on their own. It took, 
it took a while. It took a while. It's, uh, it's, it's, it wasn't easy. But um, new facilities were built. People were trained. Uh, very many courses were presented theoretical. A lot of practical training was done on the site. And then we slowly started uh, migrating the training into the UAE by bringing people over here and starting to focus on site. And this is still continuing today. We have engineers in the facility. We have technicians in the facility. People from all, all of the various disciplines that are being trained. As I said, it's, it's not enough. It's not, it's not good enough. We, we still need to improve on that. And we are aiming to do that in the next couple of years. But at least a, a sound foundation has been established. The company has now been established. It's a sustainable business. As a sound technical foundation, uh, the, the, the fact that we've, that we've uh, grown the capability to include R&D design and, and, and the testing part of it uh, more into the missile development world has enabled us to appoint people, Emiratis in that domain as well, to, be, uh, to shadow the, the, the more experienced individuals. And then in the long run, hopefully, this is the incubation of the next generation of young Emirati engineers that, that we will see in years to come. With that, I'd like to say thank you once again, Tunis Bota, Youssef Al-Balushi, al, al your, your amazing team that I've been honored to, to watch grow over the last eight years and, and will, will over the next eight years. Uh, everyone at EDGE, uh, putting these uh, working groups together during such a busy time for you all uh, is, is an extra added um, uh, obligation, but one that we thank you very, very much for participating. Uh, with DSMC and our members and partners uh, to grow the network, to grow all of the businesses uh, and to expand the capabilities of the UAE together. Thank you very, very much uh, for this presentation. Uh, we would encourage everyone to reach out um, uh, to, to Altaric directly. Um, and we would like to uh, let everyone know that uh, we have a recorded a version of this as well as the slides that will be made available uh, to DSMC members and partners uh, going forward. And, and uh, Tunis, uh, I'll give you the last word before we say goodbye. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Matthew. Thank you for the opportunity and thank you everyone for attending. Uh, we really honored to have been uh, able to, to at least give you some insight, a very basic intro into our world. Uh, we, we are a, a very active, I believe, in a dynamic company, well established in the UAE, and we would look forward to uh, engaging with, uh, with companies or partners, organizations that are in this kind of business or interested in this line of, of these line of products. So we'd be looking forward to making contact with you. So thank you uh, once again. Well, thank you, Matthew. Thank you for making this opportunity to that all people will understand more about the Tariq and they are welcome to contact anytime. Yusuf, uh, thank you very much, Shukran. Um, and thank you to everyone, uh, DSMC members uh, and partners. Uh, thank you again for attending today. Uh, stay safe, stay well, and stay strong. And if you need any support, please contact us for anything. Thank you very much, and we'll see you all again very soon. Masalama. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Masalama.